All right, well, I'm here at the uh, terminal over in Gary, Indiana, and uh, came back basically to get the truck inspected. But the brand new wheel seals that I had put on about six months ago from the TA are leaking. Not real bad, but if you look up in there, you can see that they're starting to seep around them. So, yeah. Um, the trailer, the trailer also, it was inspected, what, less than three months ago at, the, at a, another TA. And they passed it, except for a tire that had some dry cracking in it, which I don't know how, because the tires are probably only maybe, what, the tra trailers at 19, and the tires are original Michelin's, so... Um, I had to replace one tire. And, um, yeah, it needs brakes. The trailer needs brakes. So, that's how, that's how this is going to go. So, instead of having it all done right now at the carrier um, terminal, because they only got two guys on, and they got other stuff to do, they asked if I could stay Monday, which obviously CLGs are supposed to deliver Monday. And I called and texted the Landstar broker. I forgot to put this little. Called and texted the Landstar broker. And um, no word yet. It is Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. So, you know, some people sit in bed. Some people don't keep their work phone on them. So, who knows? Um, I looked at the Raycon. The rate confirmation actually don't have a, a date or time to even deliver these. So, um I, I, I don't, I don't even know um, what, what to even do about that. Uh, so maybe I could just stay here and just be like, well, the rate confirmation didn't say anything. So uh, no, I don't, I don't want to screw the guy over. Apparently, he lives like not even like 30 minutes away from where I, you know, live. So I'm not. Uh, I'd like to try to keep a little relationship um, going there, even if it is Landstar. Um, so we're, I'm gonna. Um, now I actually show you the right way to change, well, almost right way because, like I said, I got a 48 foot trailer, I ran out of, you ran out of room for the chaining. Um, unfortunately, I had to use the state pockets and I, I hear guys all the time, yeah, you can run a chain through the state pocket and stuff. Don't. Use the spools, state pockets suck, they crack, they rip, I don't care, unless you have the metal um, state pocket holder with the loop through it uh, for securement, I think they're rated for 5,500 pounds um, that drop in the state pocket. Do not chain anything to the state pocket. So, all right, I'm going to swap this around and go out there and we're gonna go take a walk around the truck and everything. All right, so now that I've been told, well, you know, figured it out when I got the rate confirmation, I had to pull my chains off and rechain everything. Now that I've been told that these are actually well, let, me, let me get on the side the sun's not shooting shooting you on i don't know maybe it's better now that i've been told that that these uh well when i got the bol that these are like what twenty two thousand pounds yeah anything over ten thousand and one pounds requires a chain on each corner of the vehicle um, so you need four four tie downs on each part so that being said I did an X pattern uh, right there I also made sure the chains aren't rubbing um, there I've heard I heard stories where, where DOT guys will nab you just for the chains rubbing even if they aren't worn away or anything um, it's like the, the whole big thing about that. It's all up to perception. Um, if you want, you can read, go, you know, the little green book, your FM CSA book. It's section, I think 300, 301 in the 100s or whatnot. All the securement stuff is down, uh, in there. Most states adopt the actual federal guidelines because they're so in depth. Um, now there are states that add to it, like Pennsylvania, I know they add something about the boom and that's where this is going. So that's why I got the, the boom, you know, uh, held down, so, you know, secured down so good. Um, I, you know, I, all the time that, you know, I hear about coming out of uh, Bedford up there with the JLG plant, guys getting nabbed. 
Um, now that was a couple years ago. I don't know if they changed that. But so I X patterned the chains. Back here, you're going to see that I didn't have room to do it. So I just went straight back. Now, I don't know. The girl that set this down, I told her to set it down level. She still didn't set it down level. I guess this is better than it was. But yeah. Um, so as you can see, most guys, th this isn't caused for me. So if you look over here, just like this, most guys will throw their straps over here. And actually the edges aren't that bad on this one, but they'll throw the straps and they'll cut the straps and they'll tighten this to hell down super crazy. I don't know why. And they'll bend these and that's what's happened. This probably got like these are already beat up old rental units. These aren't brand new. So I'm not too worried about scratching them or doing much to them. Like as you can see, they're freaking, you know. Um, also, a lot of guys say don't strap to the bars. Well, these bars are supposed to be rated to some kind of holding strength because um, they're supposed to be clipped onto. Um, some of them you're supposed to be clipped onto. Some of these actually come with uh, lanyards already, like, like here, you can see right there. Some of them actually have hot spots where you can hook to them. Other ones, you clip the lanyards right to the bar so the guys don't fall off of it. And you know, if something happens, like as you can see in the picture right there. Um, but anyway, uh, as long as you keep these, like this one's pretty tight because I wanted to keep this down. As long as you don't go crazy on these and bend the shit out of the bars, there's no reason you can't throw these straps over these. And, and they ain't going to get cut there. This, you're going to have to add, you know, you're going to have to add side, um, you're going to have to add edge protectors. And, um, and what you're going to do is you're going to bend the shit out of this because it's just shitty, shitty metal. So, uh, the same thing with these. These you got to watch out for. Some of these on, uh, not on, not on this, but on some of these, this is pl like a plastic tube, uh, uh, square tube that you, you know, strap down to it. You're going to break this, this, uh, holder for the, your hydraulic lines. If you look, this is like, I don't know, quarter inch steel or whatnot, maybe three sixteenths. So it ain't gonna, you know, I'm also doing it pretty close to the, uh, support right there. So, you know, you're not going to bend that. that. This is just, this ain't even really that super tight. This, like I said, this is to keep Pennsylvania happy, to be honest with you. Because technically, having this walkway held down, this articulates sideways and stuff. And the more the merrier. Um, you know, you get one DOT inspection, it's going to mess up your points. And, you know, uh, you get a fine sometimes. And, you know, it... it Sure, it's a pain in the ass slinging extra chains and doing everything, but it, you know, it, it is more of a pain in the ass when your insurance rates go up through the roof and you get CSA points and, you know, have problems with your carrier and everything. Um, oh, yeah, here's one I'm going to show you. So, so I usually like using two spools. Um, you can use one, but I like using two. Um, now... I, like I said, I see guys talk about these steak pockets. Yeah, you can use the steak pockets. Well, here, I'll show you why I don't like using steak pockets. Right there is why I don't like using steak pockets. Steak pockets are good for nothing. Um, <laughs> they, they never hold up. They, they, they get ripped off very easy all the time. Um, they're just junk. Then again, this is a utility. So... Uh, you know, uh, now that being said, if this was like a Fontaine with the closed steak pockets and the, you know, whatever they got going on with that, that, that I, I love the Fontaine design. Now there's a lot of guys that hate Fontaine, but you know, I, I like it. Um, uh, now also about these chains, oh, let me go back here. I don't know if the sun's a little bit better or not. All right. With these chains. With the way the law is written, if you took this chain and you took it, uh, well, right now, this chain when they when you, well, I forget what they call it, retro retroactive retro something, uh, the the will the will working limit, um, when you have them like this, singled out one on each corner, they take the will the working load limit. 
and they basically divide it in half. So now you're working with only, what are these, 60, 6,600 pounds. So now you're only working with 3,300 pounds of working load limit. So now through the whole load, you only have 3,300 pounds on each corner as a working, so that's still got to add up to your securement. Um, also, depending on, like I said, everything's inter interpretation. Technically, as far as I'm concerned, the, these count as securement. Um, the straps, the straps over the boom and over the, the walkways, they, uh, or the buckets or whatever you want to call it, uh, they count as securement as far as I'm concerned because they're holding the vehicle down. Um, now, like I said, that's open to interpretation, uh, but if you, you know, you go and you read the damn book over 10 times to the officer, you know, and, and, you know, act really proper and, and, you know, don't give him a hard time, you know, maybe you can convince him and you, you, you know, you won't get a ticket. Um, but now if you take this chain and let's say I took this chain, I took it apart and I ran it through the eyelid over there and back down to the other side and did the same thing. and still did the X pattern, but ran the chain across. When you run the, ch for some reason, when you run the chain across, the only thing I could think of is either they're, they're trying to make sure you don't get idiot guys that chain to one side or, and, and say that's secured, or they wanna distribute, you know, distribute the, the, the pat, you know, the, um, I guess the will of these spools on each side, you know, in case you're in an accident, maybe they want to distribute the the forces. I don't know. But if I took this and I ran it all the way over and down to the other stake pocket and then and then um, took my binder and tightened the binder down and everything, they consider they would give this the full working load limit of sixty six hundred pounds if it goes across to the other side. Like like this, if it only goes over to one side, they give it half. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So when you do this, you got to make sure you got when you get machinery like this, and you have to do you know over over ten thousand pounds, and you have to chain down each side. You have to make sure that half the working load limit is counted on each of these um, securements, and that it adds up to half of whatever you're you're hauling. So these are twenty two thousand pounds. So I got to get over. I got to get over at least. Uh, 12, oh, we'll say 11, 11,000 pounds, which these, these meet, these meet the requirement. Um, let me go back here too. Now this, this, you're allowed to do this. This is perfectly fine. Running the chain along multiple, multiple uh, spools and pockets. Same thing, fucking pockets bending already. That's why I don't like using these stake pockets. But like I said, I hadn't. You still got to keep these on a 45, they want these on like a 45 degree angle away from, you know, there, I've seen officers that had actual, um, not rulers, but the angle, you know, pieces of angle and stuff to, <laughs> you know, some, some of these guys really try to go, go at it a hundred percent, you know, um, other guys, if you're just trying to actually do, you know, secure it and get it right, you know, they'll leave you alone. Um. But some of these guys are a real stickler, so, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you that anything 10,000 pounds, 10,001 pounds needs four, needs four securements on each corner. Uh, like if it didn't have, if it didn't have these, you're going to have to chain to the axles and make sure you don't, you know, nick any lines or, or any hydraulic stuff or anything like that. Um, if you wanted to. Oh, okay, that works. If you wanted to, you'd also run chain through there, and you could either run it through there and back over and down, or you could run it all the way across. If you run all the way across, like I said, you get the six thousand pounds. If you run it over to one side, you only get half. It's it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even gonna. It's typical government regulation. So, uh, let's see. What else can I tell you? Give me pointers on. All right. So when you're doing these. Um, the, the, the best, when you're chaining, the best thing you can do is if you keep your chain straight and you don't have them twisted or not or anything, um, it, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, use these binders. Uh, the best thing you do when you put these binders on, you grab from the top chain 
and you pull with the binder. You get all as much slack out as you can and you hook from the bottom. You also take the hooks and you hook towards you. Not away from you, try to hook towards you. It keeps, like I said, it keeps it from wrapping the chain up and it, it gets a, you know, gets a better bite. Um, that's how they're pretty much designed. Now, also, if you want to, a lot of guys say you can't, but if you want to, you could technically, well, I wouldn't say technically, but you can, you could take these binders and you can hook them to the side rail. If I was going to do that, as I said, the stake pockets, I don't rely on these stake pockets. I would make sure I'm trying to hold on to the rail between these spools. As you can see on the stake pockets, they're only welded there and they're only welded on the bottom. That's it. They're not welded down the side. See, they're not welded down the side or anything. So, one of these spools, they're welded all the way around. So, if you're going to use the binder or the chains, if you have to run a chain through there, uh, which you're allowed to have securement on the outside of the rub rail, at least in the United States, you're going to want to uh, do it in between the spools. It may, uh, I would, yeah, just do it between the spools. I don't trust anything. Uh, like I said, I don't trust these pockets. They're junk. They've always been junk. Um, I've seen guys put um, pipe stakes on these, and as soon as like one pipe stake moves or something, it just rips it, rips this off. And once it once it starts here. There's, you know, not very good, you know, even though these are welded, they're good up and down, side to side, but when you pull it out like this, it just rips these right off, you know, the, tra the trailer. Uh, let's see, what else can I say about this? Um, the big thing, what I'm wondering, let me go out somewhere out and it's not in the sun again. This is a little bit, a little bit not in the sun. Another thing I'm wondering, you see how I have it coming up and around? And I have it hooked up to the chain now. If I brought that up and back down and to a binder and had it hooked hooked to a spool, this I would like to ask a good DOT officer. I'm not saying, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying that this is, you know, how you get your full working, uh, working uh, limit here. But what I would like to ask is if I took the chain and put it around the spools and ran the chain up and back around and then took the the binder hook to the chain and then hook the binder to the actual rail if that counts as you know connect two two connection points to the to the trailer and if you could get your whole working load limit because if you could do it that way then theoretically you could you know you'd haul heavier equipment um is like you would you would meet your four points of contact and you would meet your double um you know double contact to the trailer or whatnot but like i said so far the only way i could see to get the whole working load limit of this chain would be to run it up through the eyelet and then back over to the other side and then put your binder on uh now what you can also do if these were only ten thousand pounds all right these were only 10,000 pounds. You could run your chain up, one chain, you could run it up, and then hook your binder to the chain, to the, to the rail, and then leave the slack, and then run the chain up, you know, up and around, pull the slack over, and do the same thing. That would count as uh, two, you know, two different four-point securements with one chain. So you don't have to pull one chain out, and you run it up, hook it up to that, and then run it, and then, you know, keep the slack in the middle, and then run the chain back up again and, and hook it with the binder. So you can also do that with one chain. Um, I'll have to show, it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to um, explain it. I'd have to show it. Um, hmm, i trying to think how easy way to do that. Um, all right, so let's say let's say this let's say this was the eyelet. So I hooked around the eyelet, right? And I ran the chain back down. Let's say this spool, and I still had plenty of chain left. Well, I would take it. I, well, I wouldn't run the chain down, but I would run the chain back over to here, 
I would hook the ratchet binder into the rail, ratchet binder to the chain, and then of course you have all that extra chain. Well then what you can do is you can go across on like a caddy corner, do the same thing, hook to your other eyelet on the piece of equipment, and when you, if you have enough chain, you pull it down on an angle and hook up another binder to it down to the rub rail. I, I hope you understand that. Um, I'll have to show it when I, when I get a chance. So, um, all right, well, I guess that's my equipment securement 101. Uh, you know, make sure you keep your chains bundled up. You know, when they start hanging off the side of the trailer, that's when, when DOT starts having problems with that. Um, just wrap it around it. If you want, you can use uh, bungees and stuff. Like, same thing. There you go. Steak pocket. So technically, well, that's probably all right because it hasn't cracked yet. But technically, right now, this load is, uh, you know, the steak pockets are cracked. Uh, <laughs> technically, this load isn't illegal. Or, you know, legal, I mean. Uh, so, yeah, so that's why... You know, I don't like using state pockets. I guess, you know, even if I try to get them, I don't think I have much room for them to even to move these machines closer together. No. So, this was a 53-foot trailer. Um, you know, I could have done that. The only the only way I could have done, you know, actually, no, I couldn't have. Because let's say I was like, maybe I could have had her keep the machine farther back. But then again, I run out of room to secure the load. Because like I said, they want it on a 45-degree angle. Um... Hmm. Now, that being said, maybe I could have, you know, maybe I could have secured it to the axles and brought it around the tire and still put it on an angle. But the problem is when you start, you know, I see guys do this crap. I see guys will hook, hook to the axle or hook to this. Well, usually it's I'm not calling out the goddamn um, hotshot guys, but they'll, they'll hook to the eyelet and they'll bring, bring the chain around and they'll hook to here. And then they'll do the same in the back. And they'll be like, yeah, it's not moving anywhere. Well, sure, it's, it's, it's not moving anywhere. But the problem is when what, what DOT is looking at is when you... So let's say you hit something. So to be honest, the only chains that are keeping the, the, the piece of equipment from moving forward are the front ones. Because these chains are pulling technically pulling the equipment forward. They want equal uh, equal distribution. Uh, you know, I, I know I don't. It don't really make any sense because you would think if you know those chains are pulling that way, what are they doing? They're not really doing anything. If you hit hit anything, it's it's just the way the like I said. That's even open for inter uh, being interpreted. Um, the the same thing goes for like you would think. If you hook the chain to the axle here and brought it down here, and then put, hooked another chain to the axle and brought it down here, that 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 would count as securement. But like I said, they they it's interpreted a different way, and it's just the way the regulations are written. So you're pretty much stuck with this. Like I said, this like um, on the other side, like I have the chain actually going through the bucket. If the girl would have moved the bucket over more. I probably could have done it just like this and had it had to go through the through the you know through the side of the bucket but you know there's it's it's a pain in the butt when you there ain't much room wiggle room like it would really suck if these were brand new pieces of equipment i'd have to be a lot more careful with securing them and since they're already all beat up it makes it 10 times easier um so all right any any uh, comments, questions, criticism? Um, let me turn. Let me pop this out here and just show the whole truck and everything. Um, you know, let me know. Um, I'm perfectly fine for it. Like I've only been doing this for ten years. Um, I only know what you know what I have read and interpreted in the book, and what I've talked to DOT officers about. Um, the, the easiest way is to remember 10,001 pounds and up. You need four points of securement. And also remember on those four points of securement, they're cut in half. If it connects to, if everything connects to, uh, connects to one side and doesn't run across, if it connects from the piece of equipment to one side, 
the wheel is cut in half. So the chain wheel is cut in half. So now I'm only at 3,300 pounds and not 66. All right, so remember that. If it doesn't run over to both sides, the wheel is cut in half. So, um, so let's say if these were small, small ones, they only weigh 10,000 pounds. You could just run the chain up through the two eyelets and come right across and be fine. You got your whole 6,600 pounds and 66 and 66 with the 10,000 pound a piece of equipment, you're, you're doing good. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just try to remember that. 10,001 pounds, you need four points of, uh, four points of contact on, on, on the equipment and the working load limit is cut in half on, you know, unless it runs all the way across to the other side of the flatbed. Um, let's see, uh, let's turn this around, I'll talk to you guys. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's my securement lesson 101. Um, I'm not going to go in detail about, you know, the chains and if they're rubbed. Pretty much, if your chain doesn't, doesn't look like it did when it was new, and I don't mean if it's shiny or dirty, if it's got, you know, rubs on it, um, bent chain or whatnot you know it's just get rid of it you now technically you can still use the chain as long as you don't use that point in the chain to secure so if there's only one half of the chains messed up you can still use the other half as long as you don't secure anything to the parts that are rubbed through or to the parts that are bent um you know they, they still count count as the whole working load limit um let me let me here. You know, I'm gonna look top out strap here too. So, if I, if I have any straps over here? They're bad. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Now, straps. Straps they go by quarters. So, a four inch strap. There's four quarters. So, if you have a whole quarter gone on that strap, or three, I don't know, three sixteenths of that quarter, they they fail the strap. Um, rubs, rubbing on a strap. Another thing, open to interpretation. I have a few straps that are rubbed flat. You know, they don't look cut, but there you can tell they were touching something. Now, does it look like it took anything off the strap? No, it just looks like it, you know, warmed up that part of the strap and flattened it out. Um, like I said, up to interpretation. Usually, strap. If you're really worried about it, just replace a strap or add extra straps or securement. Um, like I said, if they if you have, if you have, let's say, uh, let's say you have a 10 piece of, I don't know, a 10 piece piece of steel and it weighs 10,000 pounds. Well, 10 feet, you're gonna need two straps every 10 foot. And they are sticklers about that. New York's got me on granite slabs or just, you know, pieces, little pieces were hanging up over 10 feet, like little pieces, like an inch, you know, just jagged edges. And they got me on that. Um, so anything over, you know, and technically, technically, jeez, oh I don't want to go all into this, but technically I had that secured down by four straps. I had four straps, uh, two, two from the actual A-frame, which was bolted to the flatbed, and two uh, straps thrown over. So technically I had four straps, but they, I don't know, the guy did not want to count the, uh, the A-frame straps as a securement, I don't know, it turned into a uh, you know, bunch of bullshit. And, we still lost in court. So, um, anyway, now that I went off on that tyrant, uh, straps, um, you can never have, you can never have, uh, too many, too, you can never have too much securement. The more the merrier. Um, you know, don't go crazy. <laughs> I'm not saying like fucking fill this whole thing up with spools, 30 or 40 spools and, you know, strap, you know, 40 straps to something that weighs like 10,000 pounds. But just just throw the extra strap. If you have a strap that has like a little nick on it, and you don't feel like changing it, or you don't have an extra strap, just throw another strap. You know, it'll still count. Um, if the, if you get pulled over and they decide to neck the strap, um, you know, you still you're still secure. You, you know, they they won't write you up because the load's still secure. But they'll you know they'll say, hey, this strap's only worth half the wor working limit now. Um, now chains, on the other hand. Let's say one of these chains were loose. Unless I had, unless I had a chain going through here and over the other side. Oh. Now, even that, this is open to interpretation. Technically, that corner is not considered 
secured anymore. So they'd be like, well, you don't have four secure, four corners secured. Your, you know, your loads unsecured. Um, he could technically say that. Now, if I had a, if I had a chain running through the middle here, or these straps, uh, like I said, I count these straps. They're holding the equipment down. I count. But like I said, open interpretation, <laughs> like everything else in the government. Um, you know, whatever can benefit them. Um, you know, my, my, I would say it's still held down. If I had a chain through here and that chain loosened up, you know, um, I would say it's, you know, still secure. But like I said, they might say, hey, each point has to be secure. If it's not secure, it's not. That's why if you have something that you know you're going for a long, bumpy ride, especially like through Michigan or something, it might be worth it to throw that one or two extra chains Especially if you know you're going through a scale or you have an older piece of equipment that they like to fucking pull in all the time. Sorry for the profanity, but it's the way it is. Um, hair's getting all messed up. <laughs> um, you know, throw that extra strap, throw that extra chain. Um, and that's, that's it. That's my spiel about Securement 101, I guess. Um, got some good subs so all right well that's today's video um i'll just probably i don't know i'll add it nah, i don't know if i'm gonna add it to the other video or, or not because technically the other video the other video you see if these were ten thousand pounds or less that's how that's a perfectly good way to secure secure these um i didn't think these were that heavy because they don't look too big I mean, there's a lot of steel here, but they don't look too big, so I thought maybe they were only 10,000 pounds. That's what the guy and girl said they were. But as soon as I got the view out, I was like, uh, you know, these aren't 10,000 pounds. Also, if you look at the, uh, well, I don't know if you're catching on this. If you look at the trailer, surprisingly, like I said, utility, you can see it's all wavy. Right where these, uh, these are sitting. So, uh, there's a good, I think you can see it real good at that one down there. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll catch you guys later. I already made this video longer than it needs to be. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I get the point across about, you know, the working load limit and, and how they interpret everything. Um, you know, save guys tickets for unsecured load. Because that's, that's a hell of a hit to your CSA. Uh, and um, most, you know, uh, if you're a new guy, like just started out and you get hit with that, most carriers will probably get rid of you, um, unless, like I said, they're a mega carrier and they're self-insured. But most carriers that deal with insurance companies and stuff, they, you know, that's a big, that's a big hit. Uh, it's just like the 15 mile an hour or whatever, uh, you know, um, it's a big hit. So, all right, take care, everyone. I'll see you.